and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Please, sit down. I don't know about you, but all morning I've been sitting in there watching the sky. I heard early predictions of rain. We'll have to get this over with. But I thank you all very much, and it's always a pleasure to welcome the businessmen and women of America to the White House. I'm delighted to take part in celebrating World Trade Week, which reaffirms the importance to our well-being of trade and recognizes the need for increased export efforts. America's future growth and prosperity depends on how well we develop and compete in foreign markets. One in eight manufacturing jobs is related to exports and 25 percent of our farmers' cash receipts come from exports. In fact, exports account for 25 percent of the total value of all goods produced in this country. Exports mean jobs for our people, profits for our businesses, and growth for our economy. And that's why it's going to be a pleasure to present the well-deserved E and E Star Awards for Excellence in Exporting. But let me begin by pointing out the backdrop for export opportunities in the economic climate here at home. I know you're all familiar with the dramatic turnaround that has been accomplished. We're in the midst of a wonderful economic expansion, and I believe we have a lot to be proud of. Our growth is helping to pull the rest of the free world out of recession, and this will increase demand for American exports. But occasionally, the interests of diplomacy and the interests of American industry seem to conflict. Well, our administration sees it as our job to reconcile the two and make it easier for American business to open up new markets on a fair footing. And we're working hard in that direction. In 1982, we passed the Export Trading Company Act, aimed at opening foreign trade opportunities for medium and small-sized companies. The bill removed impediments to trade, permitting companies to sell American products overseas more efficiently and more effectively. We're also implementing an international investment policy to reduce the number of government measures that distort or impede the flow of international investment. Our trade missions have been to Europe, Asia, Africa, and Latin America, seeking, seeking to develop new export opportunities. Now, these are just several of the efforts. We're going to do everything we can to get government out of the way to make sure that you have the opportunity to compete effectively in world markets. And there's something else. Last November, I visited Japan and Korea. And last month, it was China. And next week, it's Europe and the London Economic Summit. And I'm beginning to feel a little like an export product myself. But one of the key purposes of these trips is to see that all the export trading doors are opened as wide as possible. As I told a number of export trade industry representatives last month in Tacoma, when I go abroad, I go as something of a salesman, do everything I can to promote U.S. exports, except possibly wear a Buy American bumper sticker on my bag. We're committed to keeping markets open to free trade. We oppose protectionism because, like so many other forms of government intervention, it doesn't work. Protectionism brings higher prices. It provokes retaliation and it insulates inefficiencies in production, and we'll continue to oppose it. Government can set the framework for expanded trade, but it can't make trade flourish. That's up to you, the private sector, to make that happen. And that's why it's my privilege to present the E and E Star Awards. Our award winners are making it happen in a fiercely competitive environment. You have good reason to be proud, and we're proud of you. And so now for the awards, and I shall turn this back to Secretary Brown. Thank you. <clears throat> the 
Mr. President, I would suggest that uh, maybe we're all better off now that you are selling for all of us rather than just for one company or two, uh, as you have in your past. Uh, if you will, when I call your name, uh, come to the uh, uh, podium here to the uh, left, and we will uh, have each of you come individually. Mr. President, the first uh, recipient is Mr. James B. Cantrell, President of Belco Industries Incorporated of Carrizozo, New Mexico. Mr. John Bondhus, President of Bondhus Corporation, Monticello, Minnesota. Mr. Emery G. Alcott, President of Canberra Industries, Meriden, Connecticut. Mr. Sergio De Armas, President of Florida Exporters and Importers Association of Miami, Florida. Mr. Leonard Kunzman, Director of the Agriculture Development and Marketing Division of the Oregon Department of Agriculture of Salem, Oregon. <laughs> Mr. Reef Pfeiffer, Reese Pfeiffer, President of Pfeiffer Wire Products, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. <laughs> Mr. Richard D. Messenger, Chairman of the Board of Power Kerbers Incorporated, Salisbury, North Carolina. <laughs> Mr. David Zimanek, President, REC Specialties, Camarillo, California. <laughs> Dr. Leonard Skolnick, President, Spitz Space Systems, Chads Ford, Pennsylvania. Mr. John Walker, Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development, Nashville, Tennessee, I assume. <laughs> Dr. Donald Tourville, President, Zeus Scientific Incorporated, Raritan, New Jersey. Mr. President, those are the 11 uh, E awards, and we have three star, E star award recipients. They are Mr. Harold W. Godberson, President, Gomaco Corporation, Ida Grove, Iowa. <laughs> Mr. William Donahue, Commissioner, New York State Department of Commerce. And last but not least, Mr. President, Mr. Steve Perry, General Manager, Toledo Scale Company, Division of Reliance Electric, Worthington, Ohio. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, thank you all again for being here. And congratulations to all of you, gentlemen, and thank you very much. Now I'll go back to work. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. We'd like to have the opportunity to congratulate each one of you uh, ourselves.